Welcome back to another video guys. In this video I want to introduce a thing called procedural primitives. Unity lets you create meshes inside your game at runtime. You can also edit geometry in your game at runtime so you can refer to meshes vertices and actually change the position of the vertices in your game and that is really great. You might want to do this in some cases and I thought this was a great opportunity to jump into this now because at this at this moment in our project we want to find a way we can drag objects using a big mesh and there's a really good way we can do this. We can create a mesh as the game is running or or um, change the mesh's size based on this drag and if that mesh is colliding with our invisible mesh then we know the drag is over the object and that is why we're going to create a mesh in our game but in the next couple of videos I'm just going to explain how everything works how they are created and how we can actually see them in the scene once they're created in this video I'm going to make a plane in the next one I'll make a cube like a 3D cube because that's a bit different than a 2D plane okay guys um, so I'm just going to code this in C sharp I'm going to make a new game object and attach the script to it I'm going to call this created plane okay and we just need a couple of components I'm going to add a mesh filter as you can see there's no mesh attached to this mesh filter because we're going to actually create the mesh using the C sharp code and also we also need a mesh renderer so we can actually see it in the game you can add these components if you want in code but I thought it'd be easier to do it like this and just actually code the object in the script and uh, we might also want to add a material, maybe a white paint, so we can actually see it in the game rather than just a purple blob, you know, that purple material that doesn't have any UV or anything in it. So that's our object, and I'm just going to, oh, that's a good place, so as soon as we start the game we'll be able to see it. Okay, so that's cool. I'm going to make a new C sharp script so we can actually code this out. C sharp, I'm going to call this uh, Create Plain Mesh. Okay, let's open it up. And before I start explaining how this works, I'm just going to attach the script onto the object. So it created plane, create plane mesh. Okay, that's all we need to do here, guys. We don't need to do anything else in Unity. So let's hop over to um, Mono Develop. We're going to do this in our st in our start function. We only need to create this plane once. We don't need to update it and stuff. So I'm just going to do everything in the start function. Okay, so I'm just going to get that mesh filter component. So I'm going to say mesh filter. I'm going to call it MF for mesh filter. Get component. And I'm going to get the mesh filter component. And I'm going to assign a new mesh. Mesh. And I'm going to call it just mesh equals new mesh. Okay, guys. Um, and we're going to get the mesh filter mesh property and assign our newly created mesh to it and then once we created the mesh and stuff it will be assigned to our mesh uh, property in our mesh filter in other words it will be assigned to this thing here our mesh and then we'll be able to see it in the game okay that's cool so now we can go ahead and create the actual object so the first thing we need to create is the vertices is the vertices okay guys after that after the vertices we're going to create triangles because every single model in unity is split up in triangles I can just zoom into anything and it will show you Unity works in triangles. That's how most game engines work. So once we created the object shape using vertices, we need that we then need to split those into triangles. And that's not a big problem to do. And then we need to work out the normals if you wanted to. And you can work out the normals only if you want to display the object in the game. Alright guys, because in our case, with our mesh we're going to drag out, with our um, drag functionality, we, won't, we don't want to see the mesh, so we won't have to worry about the normals, but I'm going to address them, just so you guys are aware of them. And we, call, we can also edit the UVs, so how textures are displayed, how they're organized on the 3D object. So these are the four things we can do. And we can do a bunch of stuff like optimize the mesh and work out the bound, bounding volume and stuff but I'll get to that later on. But these are the four things we need to worry about. Vertices, splitting up the objects into triangles, and if you want to show this in the in the actual game, work out the normals and also the UVs if you want to display a texture. Okay, but let's go to the vertices firstly. Okay, so let's just draw out a our plane. It's going to sit in um, the Y rotation. So here's our plane. So we, what we want to do is we want to work out these points, and these points are going to be the vertices just as you'd expect in a 3D modeling application um, 
and we, we're going to store these vertices in an array. I'm just going to get rid of that artifact there. Okay, so this point is going to be index 0. This one's going to be 1, 2, and 3. Okay, guys, and the first thing we need to do is just assign where these points are going to be in 3D space. So that's not very hard to do. So going back to mono develop with our vertices, we can then get a new vector 3 array. Array, and we're going to call this one vertices equals new vector 3 array. Okay, and then we can assign our values in curly braces in this array. So in this case, we know our array is going to contain four values, so we can go ahead and put four in here. It doesn't really matter, you don't have to do this. So the value is going to be a new vector 3 because our vertices are in 3D space. And I forgot to mention something, guys. We might want to actually assign the width and the height to our plane. So public float width equals, I'm going to say 50 units, and also the height. 50 units. Okay, that's cool. Now we can work out the vertices relative to our game object. So point zero, which is going to be at the bottom left of the plane, can be at just zero, zero, zero. So it's just going to be the origin of the game object. Okay, and that, that's the point zero. Then we can go ahead and say new vector three to for point one. Point one is going to be here, so it's going to go across the width going to go across and we don't deal with depth so z is going to be zero all the time okay point two new vector to the uh, vector three point two is here so we don't go across any width we just go up the height in this case it will be zero the height and zero again and also we're not forgetting point three in this case is going to go across the width and the height so width height zero Okay guys, this is our array, and that's simple as that. We've just worked out our vertices. Okay, so the next thing is the triangles. And as you might expect, all we need to do is split this plane into two triangles. So we need to define the triangles in another array. So let's just draw a really thin line that goes down. So this is going to be our triangle one, this is going to be triangle two. Okay, so with our triangles, we can make another array, but instead of a vector three this time, we want to make an integer array and I'm going to call this one try equals new int array and in this case we're going to make six values okay guys so the reason we've made an integer instead of a vector 3 is because in order to make triangles we need to actually um, get the vertices index so for the first triangle it's going to be from 0 to 2 to 1 because we're just getting the we're just getting the indexes of the vertices basically to make these triangles for the second triangle we go to the index 2 to the 3 to the 1 to make the second triangle. Simple as that guys. Um, so all we need to do here is store integers. And the array just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and every three values makes a, the, the triangle. So it's not that complicated to do this. And another thing to mention is that when you're working out the triangles we need to go by the clockwise rule. So we're always working clockwise. In this case we go from 0 to 2 and then we need to make the triangle. So we then go back to 1 and then we start with 2 again, go clockwise to 3, and then we can go back down to 1 to make the second triangle. Alright, so keep that in mind guys, always working clockwise when you're doing this. Okay, so the first triangle, we start at index 0 equals... So let's just double check things here. The first triangle is going to start at index 0, then go up to 2, then go down to 1 again. So 0, 2, 1. That's all we need to do here guys, just say try 0 equals 0. Try 1 equals 2, try... 2 equals 1, 0, 2, 1, okay, and the second triangle, like we said, was 2 to 3 to 1 to make the second one, so let's just copy and paste this, before we forget, so it's index 2 to index 3 to index 1 again, and this time we just need to add them to the array, so at index 4 and 5, right, that's our triangles out of the way, it's simple as that, so after you've worked out your vertices, then we work out the triangles, and then our mesh is kind of complete almost. Okay, so the next thing is the normals. The normals are stored in another array, and in this case, it's a vector three array because the normals control which direction the object is shown in the game, basically. And I'm going to call this one normals equals new vector three array. And we're just going to have four four values in here, one for each vertice. So normals at index zero, and because the whole plane is going to face one direction we just need all these normals to face forward so then we'll be able to see them so I'm just going to put vector 3 forward 
and by using minus vector free forward we can then see the objects when we're facing it from the forward direction okay so let's just copy and paste this three more times so again we're taking in the in the vertices um, index and just making each one uh, configuring the normals for each one to be forward that's cool and the last thing we need to do is the UVs and the UVs is a vector 2 array vector 2 array UV equals new vector 2 in this case for the vector 2's we also want four values so again all we need to do here is, is um, populate this array for each of our vertices so at index 0 for our UVs new vector 2 okay so the way UVs work the value goes from 0 to 1 in the width and height so the X and the Y because UVs are assigned on 2D planes in your 3D model and, th and uh, the UVs go from 0 to 1 0 would be 0% zero of the width or the height and 1 would be 100% of the width and height so for index 0 which is here uh, this texture at this point will be 0 0 because none of the texture will be displayed here so all we need to do is just jump back and say well 0 0 for UV 0 okay so simple as that for the next one at point 1 if, on the other hand in this case 100% of the width of the texture will be displayed but 0% of the height so in this case we can say yep the full width will be displayed so that's 1 but the height will be 0 still see where we're going guys um, so if we go to UV number 2 so for index number 2 the full height is displayed but the width is still 0 the width hasn't gone across so in this case it will be the opposite it will be 0 and 1 for the height for the full height and if we go to the last UV UV index 3 index 3 is over here so at this point the texture will display the full width and the full height so it will be 1 and 1 okay that's cool there that's our UVs and uh, I think that's what we need to do here apart from actually assign these arrays to our object so assign arrays after we've worked out the vertices the triangles the normals and the UVs if we wanted to then we can just say go to our mesh object dot vertices equals our vertices array mesh triangles equals our tri array mesh normals equals our normals array and the last one was the UVs mesh.uv equals our UV array okay guys that's all we need to do here and let's see if we have any errors here and no we don't the reason I keep getting this um, this thing is because of the terrain toolkit plugin I got and at this point there's a bit of a warning here so I might delete that terrain toolkit and get the updated version but at this point we've got a script attached to our object which is our created plane object so when I run the game we should see our plane created in front of us with our white paint texture or material okay so here we go the planes created it's quite big 50 units by 50 units I can rotate to see it and that is it guys so we've created if I jump into the scene we can actually select it if I can do that I don't want to select my terrain as you can see the triangles here boom our triangle two triangles are being created our four vertices here and the normals are facing forward that's why we can see the object in this direction if we turn it around because the normals are facing forward not the opposite way we can't see the object in this case okay guys and the UVs well the UVs work let's just see if we can drag a texture on here if I can just find a texture really quickly and let's just do I don't know if we can do that one but um as you can see the text is displayed proportionately in the game so that's awesome so everything works the UVs and the normals work we've got our triangles and our four vertices that's cool now we know how to create 2D objects in the game at runtime so in the next video I'm going to create the 3D cube at, uh, at runtime and then we'll go and continue with our game so thanks for watching the video guys hopefully see you in the next video thanks a lot